T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. It's T plus 40 seconds, and we've just had liftoff of our Falcon 9 vehicle, taking Power our Starlink payload to its targeted deployment orbit. We are now throttling down and throttling back up in preparation for Max-Q, which is coming up here in about 10 seconds or so. Max-Q is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle sees throughout ascent, Falcon so this is the largest solid. structural load that the vehicle will see. Should hear that call out in about five seconds. Maximum aerodynamic pressure. And there's that call out for Max Q, confirmation that we've just passed through Max Q. Coming up in about a minute, we will have three events in rapid succession. The first of which being main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO. This is where all nine of our M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down for the following event, which is stage separation. And that's when the first stage separates from the second stage. And then finally, the lighting of our second stage MBAC engine, which we call SES-1, or second engine start one. Now, if you've been following our Starlink missions, you know that we've reduced the number of burns on the second stage for these missions from two burns down to just one single burn. This allows the second stage to provide 70% of the velocity needed for this mission, which allows the first stage to use less fuel and thus making first stage recovery much easier. So today we will again only be doing one burn of that second stage engine. Again, coming up in about 10 seconds are those three events, MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. Miko one. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there we've just had Miko and stage separation. That stage separation confirms the successful fifth use of our first stage booster. And you can see on your right screen that second stage MVAC engine lighting up and taking that second stage to its targeted orbit. And we're just a few seconds away from fairing deploy. Again, this fairing was used once Fair before on a very confirmed. first Starlink mission. And there is the visual confirmation of fairing deploy. So this means that we've successfully reused this fairing. So now let's see if Miss Tree and Miss Chief can catch those fairing halves today. We likely won't have that live view since fairing touchdown will happen past the conclusion of this morning's webcast, but stay tuned to our social media for updates later this morning. Stage two is on a nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. For those of you just joining us, good morning and welcome. We just had a successful liftoff of our Falcon 9 about four minutes ago. Uh, there's a lot going on right now. On the right-hand side of your screen, our second stage. Its Merlin vacuum engine is currently burning and will continue to do so for a few minutes. It's carrying 60 Starlink satellites for eventual payload deploy. Uh, but we're going to focus the next few minutes on the left-hand side of the screen with our first stage. Um, Currently right now, after stage separation, that first stage is boosting, still gliding up uh, without any engine power. It's hitting Apogee just about now, 
and for the next few seconds, it's going to start to free fall down to the Earth's surface for an attempted first stage recovery on our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. As our first stage reorients itself, we're going to prepare for the first of two engine burns on that first stage to aid our recovery, the first of which is coming up in about 90 seconds. It's known as our entry burn. We fire three of the nine Merlin engines um, in the opposite direction the way we're heading. Uh, we do this in order to slow down the vehicle about 25% uh, before we hit the dense part of the atmosphere. Uh, not performing this burn would put unnecessary strain on our first stage. We're just at about T plus six minutes. We're a little more than 45 seconds away from that engine burn. It only lasts about 10 seconds. And although our first stage only takes a few minutes to get from its apogee down to, uh, down to the Earth's surface, our two fairing halves takes much longer. Oh, please stay posted uh, with our social media for updates on those recoveries. We're about 15 seconds away from that entry burn. We're going to wait for that visual confirmation the burn started and call out that that engine burn was successful. Stage, Stage one, one engine burn startup. Stage two continues to follow an nominal trajectory. Stage one, entry burn shut down. Our entry burn has just completed. The next step is our landing burn. It's about 90 seconds from now. Uh, in terms of velocity reduction, uh, with the remaining velocity, the, uh, the denser part of the atmosphere actually slows our Falcon 9 by 80%, and the landing burn uh, achieves just that last bit of reduction down to zero. And although we're focused on first stage recovery at the moment, uh, at T plus nine minutes, a little bit less than that, our second stage, uh, its engine will cut off, will then confirm it's in good orbit, and will then begin the preparations for payload deploy. Starting terminal guidance. We're about 10 seconds away from that landing burn call out. We'll sit tight and see if we can get any feed of that, that event. Stage two FTS is saved. We're still waiting on call out and confirmation for that first stage, uh, but that's our secondary mission. Right now we'll focus on our primary mission with that second stage and our Starlink satellites. We're going to, we're waiting for that uh, confirmation of second engine cutoff. We have Seco on. Our cutoff has, has completed. We're now waiting for confirmation of good orbit before we begin payload deploy.
expected loss of signal. So we've achieved that good orbit for our second stage, uh, but we're not in the right position in that orbit yet. Uh, second stage is now going to coast in this orbit for a few minutes. During this time, you're going to see it's, the second stage is going to start to spin along its central axis. This gives the Starlink satellites the momentum they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. Think of it as if you were hanging on the edge of a merry-go-round and you jumped off and it slings you out. Uh, we use this natural deployment and it prevents us from having to install complex and heavy, heavy separation mechanisms on each and every satellite. So while we wait for that position to be achieved, we're going to take a quick break and we'll return at T plus 13 minutes, 45 seconds.